Hey, it's Amanda. We're talking about the wild today, and we are going to have some fun getting back into this series. I saw a lot of mixed reviews on the opening episodes, on season two as a whole, on the boys and the amount of screen time they're getting. But we're here to talk episodes one and two. They really went out of their way, I feel, to please hashtag the lesbians with this shoney scene we get um inserted like a choppy wave amongst other choppy waves episode one as a whole felt chaotic discombobulating i was always like where where are we in the timeline is this before is this now is this like after the boys have lit it's like adding the boys in has really with the timeline in my head of how where all this is taking place. And I have heard the whispers, the gossip of people saying, oh my God, this is just lost all over again. They're just gonna throw confusing timelines at us until we hate the show. And I, I'm not saying the writers and producers want this to be Teenage Lost, but they're not trying to avoid being teenage lost either. But this scene with Shoni, with Shelby and Tony, they're laying on the forest ground like Bella and Edward from Twilight. It eventually turns into a hookup scene and I don't know, I, like I said, it, it felt disorienting along with everything else going on in episode one. My first thought upon viewing this scene was, they're buying off the lesbians. They're like, here's some boys. Oh, but here's some girls, not just girls, but two girls. Ooh, and they're doing each other. Ooh, look over here. Be distracted and don't notice this entire new cast of boys that you definitely aren't gonna give a f about. Besides the fact that this is no longer a women-centered show, the thing that fans were talking about most leading up to season two has got to be Mora's fate. And to me, it, the show makes it look like she drowns and then also leaves it open-ending. I think they just wanna be able to do whatever they wanna do and don't wanna answer that question. About the boys. <sighs> I want to like the boys. I don't, like y'all have to understand, I don't wanna be that cliche stereotype. Oh, the lesbian YouTuber is not a fan of the boy. <laughs> Shock of the century, I get it, right? But I just, I don't think they're doing as good a job acting wise as, as the women playing the girl characters. I just don't. I don't understand the awkward white guy. I don't in any way identify with the I'm supposed to be the audience perspective guy. The angry jock is a less interesting version of the angry jock from Euphoria. What I am here for is Fawton giving us Amy Winehouse vibes as she carries wood through the forest. Some people just look good no matter what. Even when they've been Lord of the Flies stranded on an island plane crash scenario. The boys go through the exact same plane crash scenario we watch the girls go through, except it's like less shown, less explained. At one point I was like, oh, they're all dry. Okay, so they must have been on the island for, you know, several hours because they're all dried out. They just, I, I just feel like they just didn't put as much effort in. They're just kind of like, you guys know how this went. Y'all remember season one, right? It's, it's that, but with, uh, Men. A lot of how we get to know these new characters involves seeing them on the beach and uh, during pissing scenes. Um, I, I just like the the opening episodes of season two. It's not just introducing the boys. It's like heavily focused on like it's, there's just a lot of mention. We got the weird angry jock screaming at uh, Raph that he's staring at his for five minutes, that was a scene. We've got a lot of scene stuff. We've got the, um, what was it? The saltwater joke type reference thing. It just, um, for a show who season one was just like, oh, women, women. Like season two opens up with lots of like, they, they just like, they slapped us. They're just like, and I'm not saying they slapped us with the, but it, it almost felt like they took a, a big old swung out of my TV and went bam, slapping me in the face. Again, I'm not trying to be a stereotype, but if I'm being honest, I, I really don't care about any of these new guys. Like me, I maybe kind of care about Raph because he got the most screen time, but even still, I was just kind of like, 
No, mostly don't care. Episode two. Episode two starts us back uh, off at the experiment factory. That's what I'm calling it. Leah has snuck into Raph's room and uh, wants him to team up with her. Again, Raph is just getting the most screen time in the beginning of season two. I think that's why he's the one I care the most about. But I am annoyed that his screen time is coming at the expense of all of these women characters we got to know in season one. At first, Raph is like hesitant. He's like, I don't know you. I just, how can he hesitate to believe her? She, how would you not realize there's some f***ed up going on if you've been deserted on an island and the second somebody comes to rescue you, they don't hand you a cell phone and say, call your mom. I like, they're very clearly like in child jail. How do they not realize this? We get a little bit more Shoney in episode two. Again, I really think the showrunner was like trying to offer us lesbians up a peace offering in exchange for what season two is gonna turn out to be. But Martha has just found out about Shelby and Tony and is trying to process it and is also realizing that like, oh, and the whole everybody knows, everybody knows. Are you sure you're okay? Like me and Shelby hanging out and everything because she told me that maybe you weren't feeling- so. Shelby told you, you told Shelby. How about you just tell her nothing? Awkward. <laughs> When Martha's yelling at Tony not to tell Shelby anything, Shelby's like two feet behind her. <laughs> just like continuing to just pretend whatever she's doing, like. <laughs> you okay, Liv? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> 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 when Leah loses it, <laughs> I'm into that. That's pretty much how I feel about the new direction the show has taken. It doesn't feel like the same show, but it does feel like a spinoff or a reboot. It's like, oh, this is familiar, but different. And for me, the obvious reason it feels so different is because it is a different show. It's like a whole new cast has been added. <laughs> and I think the main reason it's a different show is because they have lost the thing that made it so unique. The fact that it was a women-centered show. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to continue to feel this way through the end of season two, but for for me right now, it's not even that this is like a piece of show or something, although they're certainly not giving us like groundbreaking scenes or anything like that, but it's just a different show. They're giving us all different people and some shows can pull that off. If you're The Wire, you can like do whatever the hell you want, you're that good. But for me, with The Wilds, I'm like, hmm, they didn't pull this off. What did you think of the opening episodes of season two? If you're looking for more Wilds content, check out this Shoney tribute video I made during season one. I'm Amanda, this is my really gay YouTube channel, and let me know whether you'd like me to keep covering this show. I am not quite sure I will be, so definitely give me some feedback there.